Hello, welcome back to Clement Road. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be carrying on with the hillside scenery. Um, so as you can see already, um, I've painted the back scenes um, and I've ballasted a short section of the track where I'm going to start the scenery. Um, and I've also fitted a uh, Pico tunnel mouth at the end there. Um, that's basically just held up with um, scrap pieces of cardboard and some PVA glue. Um, so what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start filling uh, inside those inserts there with um, scrunched up newspaper just as Richard did at Everard Junction um, and then go over with that with uh, some plaster cloth um, so I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll be back in a minute okay so now I've stopped the trains so I might as well start um, so what I'm doing is I'm just scrunching up balls of newspaper and um, just shoving them in until you get something looking like that so I'm going to carry on with that and uh, I'll be back with you in a minute okay so I filled most of the terrain with uh, newspaper um, however I did run out so I started using old wrapping paper left over for Christmas so I mean you can use whatever you like but this is what I've used um, so the next step is I'm going to mask off the track um, and get a bowl of water and start using some plaster bandage. Okay, so I'm back with the plaster cloths. Um, now you might notice on these plaster cloths is one side is very smooth, the other side is very blotchy. So you're going to want to have to put the uh, smooth side facing down so then you can smooth over the, um, the blotchy stuff so all I'm going to do is soak it in some water for a couple of seconds uh, and then uh, drape it onto the uh, onto the scenery okay so that there is probably done half a roll um, I'm basically just going to keep on going um, probably going to build it up to about two or three layers um, so it's then properly rock solid um, another thing you've got to take in mind is when you have the newspaper it's always good to build it up more than what you need because when the newspaper gets wet underneath um, you can it does tend to collapse and you can still uh, mould it and move it to where you'd like it um, another quick thing before people start asking questions is I'm going to stop there um, just for now um, basically because I'm not still 100% certain on what to do to the right of the camera um, where the junction is. I'm maybe thinking of like a, a road bridge as a scenic break or uh, something along those lines. Um, I'll have to decide when I get the rest of the back scenes up, um, which should be sort of next week or so. So I'm just going to carry on doing the plaster cloths. Uh, I'll just leave it running and speed it up so something nice to watch. Hope you enjoy.
Okay, so that's basically the first run um, completed. Um, I'm going to let this harden up a little bit. Um, obviously, I've just been laying this and it's starting to go. Um, whereas over here and to the right of the camera, I'll be able to show you, it's, uh, it's already um, starting to go off, and that's only within about probably 20 minutes of me putting it down initially. Um, I'm quite happy with the shape. The only thing I'm not quite happy about is um, how you can actually see the cardboard gussets that I've put in. They're starting to poke through, so I might try to build up a bit more plaster cloth. And I've just noticed you can actually, I'll just push them in. Yeah, I can push them in, um, obviously because they're wet and you can form them. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just give it another couple layers of um, plaster cloth just to blend it in. I mean, it wouldn't matter too much anyway, because obviously I'm um, some quite heavy foliage is going on there. Um, but yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll let this dry and I'll be back as soon as that's dried. Okay, so, left it about 20 minutes to dry. And as you can see, it's, it's pretty much gone off. This is the last bit I laid and it's um, pretty firm. There's a couple of places it will need uh, some extra layers. Um, as you can see, it's probably, it's, uh, it does it does flex, um, especially in these areas here where I haven't quite smoothed it over properly. Whereas off camera I did uh, you know, run my hands over it uh, for a bit and it has definitely worked very well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do Cut some more bandage up. I've got another roll left. I also have two sheets of stuff. Bought for a, um, I think it was like a collector's file, something for like 50p each. Um, should still be alright. Don't think this stuff goes off or goes out of date. Um, so I'm just going to carry on and I'll get back to you when I'm done.
Okay, so that is all the plaster cloth uh, complete. Um, what I'm going to do is let that dry, um, and then I'm going to prepare some paint if I can find it. Um, and I'm basically just going to paint it in a brown colour as a baseline for the um, static grass. Um, I have actually purchased a static grass applicator since the last video. Um, it's just a Pico static grass applicator. It was about uh, £45 off eBay, brand new. Um, and I've been doing some practicing and experimenting with you know different colours and shades of grass and stuff, but that's without any, well that is with a base colour, um, but obviously that's just quite a thin, thin effect there. Uh, same goes for this one as well. Um, so hopefully, once I've got that painted, I can just get a uh, base colour of static grass down. Okay, so I managed to find my paint. I'm just going to use some uh, Woodland Scenics raw umber, uh, and all I'm going to do is just simply just brush it straight on. So the plaster has had a good chance to dry, pretty solid. So I'm going to go straight on with uh, with some paint. Okay, so that took me about 10 minutes to get one coat on there. Um, don't worry if it's not covering properly. Um, basically this stuff quite thin. Um, what I'll do is I'll just let this dry completely and uh, hit it with another coat and I'll be back with you once I've done that. Okay, so it's just had its second coat. Um, what I'm going to do is whilst the paint is wet, is I've got some, I've had this quite a few years actually. Um, it's sort of like just a blend of, um, it looks like grass, and obviously uh, you see this bits of like yellow in there, it's sort of like um, heads of flowers and stuff and whatnot. Um, I'm literally just going to sprinkle that onto the uh, wet paint um, and then spray it down with some 50 50 mix of glue. So just sprinkle it on. It doesn't have to be perfect, just give you a, a base layer if you like. So obviously your static grass is going to make up 90% of your scenery.
And remember to wipe down once you've applied this glue, wipe down where you do not want the static grass. So I'm basically be wiping down uh, the face of the tunnel mouth there, so and also on your paint back scene as well, because you don't want to get static grass growing up on the side of the wall, do you? Mostly on there. Okay, so that's mainly saturated now. I'm just going to set my static grass applicator up and uh, I'll get back to you in a minute. Okay, so I've got my static grass applicator set up. Um, I'm going to be using a mixture of uh, summer grass, which is 4 mil, and some 6 mil wild meadow. Um, I also have some some of Jarvis's uh, summer mix, which is in 2 millimeter. So I can start off with that base, and then build it up from there with um, the 4 and the 6 mil. Okay, so I've got the grass applicator set up. Um, for my earthen cave, I'm literally just using a piece of off cut up track um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to poke the earthen cable into the scenery and turn it on and just start applying the grass Okay, so I've done a little bit of uh, the hillside. I'm not quite too sure on what's going on. Um, I'm basically just going to carry on as I am. Um, but you might see in some places, I mean, it is sticking up. Um, but another sort of, it's, it's laying a bit flat. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just move it around. Just give it a bit of a wild look. probably do with using neat PVA glue in future. Um, it was just an experiment, so still gonna carry on um, with this top part. Um, I might try using neat PVA glue for this top section. Um, just see in contrast because I might have to uh, redo that bit but I'll uh, let you know. 
Okay, so I've gone and let that had a chance to dry. Um, I've got some fine new foliage, not much, it only came in a sample with the tree kit that I did in my previous video. Um, I will be definitely buying more of this because it is fantastic, uh, looks really good. Um, I also have in this old ice cream tub, if I can get them open, it's just sort of a, a mixture of uh, like clump foliage um, from Woodland Scenics. So, um, as I'm going for like a late summer look, I'm going to be using more of this almost like olivey green rather than this pure green. Um, but we'll see how it goes. So, all I'm going to do is basically just grab some neat PVA glue. You probably know the score. Um, dab it where you want it, push it where you want it, and uh, it should transform it a little bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to add one of these uh, trees that I made in the previous video. Um, so from what I've seen people doing is they've literally just grabbed the scalpel and called a hole in the plaster cloth. Um, so I'm just going to choose a nice spot, probably about there, pop a tree. And all I've seen people do is stab a hole. Probably enough just to uh, sink the trunk in a little bit, to look a bit more realistic. And a blob of glue, like that. And just place it in. So you can probably see how much of a difference that already makes to the surrounding scenery. Um, I think it looks pretty good. You have to tell me what you think in the comments. Um, the other ones I'm not too keen on. Um, they look rather uniform and compared to the fine leaf foliage that you can get, um, they kind of look, look a bit naff if you like. I mean I might tuck one up right up behind the, uh, up in the corner of the hill there. Um, I don't know yet. I'll, uh, I'll get back to that one. But what I'm basically going to keep on doing is I'm just going to build up the rest of it with um, some clump foliage. I'll probably I'll use most of it. There's little shrubbery and bushes along the side. Um, but I'll definitely be buying more uh, scenery stuff and build this hillside up. Okay, so I've done a bit more. Um, put the tree up in the back there. Uh, obviously you saw me put that one in. Um, another one, another thing I've done, 
um, because I wanted to get the effect of sort of like trees growing out of the hill. Um, all I did was cut up, cut two armatures off this armature, um, and just basically just glued them in. Um, I have some more fine leaf foliage on order, um, hopefully in some different colours as well. So basically, what I'll do is I'll just I'll um, put fine leaf foliage on that in situ, um, and also just generally add some more um, foliage and different stuff and whatnot on this hillside um, just to build it up a little bit um, so that's probably about it uh, I'm just going to carry on doing a little bit more not to overdo it um, and I'll just be back with a short little update show what you about as much as I can do for this video um, you know what I've just put some more stuff down uh, around where the hill is um, there's a couple of things I need to amend um, like the back scene Static grass stuck to it with glue, unfortunately. Um, I've damaged a bit of the ballasting I did, um, so I'll just need to sort that out tonight and also uh, weather the track. Um, apart from that, this is pretty much all I can do before I get more stuff. Um, I'll just leave it with a short video of some trains running past it. So I'd just like to take a couple minutes uh, just to thank uh, Leighton Junction uh, for the shout out he gave me last week. Um, really appreciate it um, and I'll leave a link to his channel uh, at the end of this video. Um, so yeah, I mean if you could uh, go check him out, like his videos, give him a subscribe and uh, maybe voice versa for me as well. I mean, it, really, uh, it really does give me that boost to um, carry on with the layout. So. Hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching and I'll uh, see you next time.